We love snorkeling, and we do all we can to keep the reefs that we explore healthy and thriving. And that means we've taken steps to avoid wearing sunscreen that kills coral. Hi, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, learn two things we do to avoid using sunscreen that harms the reefs. This episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Morse Alpha Expeditions. Ben and Teresa offer coastal and offshore sail training expeditions designed for sailors at all levels, plus women-only trips. Learn technical sailing and navigation skills, as well as communication and leadership. Now booking for 2020. Check out morsealpha.com. That's M-O-R-S-E-A-L-P-H-A dot com to sign up today. Morse Alpha. Sail farther, safer, and with more confidence. Over the past few years, it's been widely publicized that ingredients in conventional sunscreens kill coral. These studies appeared maybe five years ago. Even a few drops of sunscreen can kill a relatively large area, it seems. And a couple of studies have shown that oxybenzone, a chemical that's in most sunscreens and harmful to reef, also feminizes some fish. Yikes! As boaters, We've been taught for years to wear sunscreen to avoid skin cancer. But as an avid snorkeler and diver, I don't want to do anything that might damage the reefs or fish population. Admittedly, there are other contributing factors to the coral damage, but this is something that's easy for me to avoid. Our solution has two parts. Cover up when snorkeling, and use reef-friendly sunscreen for the parts that we can't cover. Actually, we use reef-friendly sunscreen anytime we use sunscreen, not just when snorkeling. Since like most boats, ours drains gray water, that is the sink and shower drains where we wash up, right straight into the ocean. Okay, the first half is covering up. Dave and I really don't like to put a lot of goop on our skin and also don't want to put any more chemicals into the water than we have to, even ones that are currently believed to be reef-friendly. So our first line of defense against the sun is a snorkel suit, also known as a dive lycra. We've worn one ever since other cruisers recommended it to us back in 2003, our first year of cruising. And a lycra suit doesn't only provide sun protection. It also protects you against jellyfish, which seem to congregate in many of the best snorkeling spots. I'm not going to claim that a lycra will protect you from a really nasty sting, such as a Portuguese man of war, but it's great against many of the smaller ones, such as the aguamales that are prevalent in the Sea of Cortez. Now, a lycra suit is not figure flattering at all, I'll admit. The good news is that you don't have to buy one that's skin tight. In fact, It'll last a lot longer if it's slightly loose and not pulling tight. Now, Dave and I prefer a one-piece suit to a rash guard, even if we combine it with pants. With two pieces, they can separate at the waist as you swim, resulting in a sunburn or jellyfish stings on the uncovered area. And just a rash guard leaves the back of our thighs exposed to sunburn and jellyfish. Now, we don't like a super tight neck as we feel like we're strangling or a really low V or scoop neck where jellies can end up inside your suit. Some sort of a middle ground is best. We also like to have some bit of bright color so it's easier to keep track of each other while snorkeling. You know, that whole buddy system thing. We like a long enough zipper to make it easy to put on and take off, but not so long that it goes into the crotch. I had that in one suit and it was exceedingly uncomfortable. Foot stirrups are nice to keep the legs pulled down while you swim. If a suit doesn't have them, you can sew a piece of elastic to the leg bottoms in a U to make a stirrup. Now, lighter weight fabrics stretch more and drive faster, but can let a little more sun through. We opt for a mid-weight, basically anything not advertised as very thin or heavyweight. Now, some people prefer lighter colors as being cooler out of the water. Since we take our lycras off immediately after exiting the water, 
or at least pull the sleeves off and tie them around our waist. This isn't a big deal to us. Now, sizing on dive lycras isn't the same on other clothes. You'll probably take at least one, sometimes two, sizes larger than you do in regular clothing. When in doubt, go for the larger size. It's better for it to be a little loose than super tight. If you're ordering online, check the size charts and take your own measurements. Don't just go on, well, I kind of think my measurements are such and such. If you write on a borderline, always go up. Now, we both like the fit and features of the Neosport dive skins with bright yellow trim. I've put links to these in the show notes, so you should be able to get them there. They're available both at Leisure Pro and on Amazon. For smaller size kids, there are a number of good options on Amazon. Friends with kids or grandkids aboard have told me that they look for basically the same thing in kids' lycras, and particularly like the sun protection offered by the one-piece suits, although they're a little tougher to remove for bathroom breaks. But they say the two-piece options really do end up separating out and giving letting kids get a sunburn around the waist. Now, when I first heard about the sunscreen problem, this was back in 2013, I started researching alternatives. Now, a number of companies every year have come out with reef-friendly sunscreen, but like everything else, they're not created equal. First, know that use of the term reef safe is unregulated. You really need to check the list of ingredients yourself. Make sure it doesn't contain, and hopefully I'm pronouncing these right, oxybenzone, butylparaben, Atoxinate or 4 methyl benzylidine camphor. There's other differences between brands. Some of them stay on in the water or with sweat much better than others. Waterproof isn't just better for your sun protection. It also means that whatever it's made of isn't going into the water right over the reefs. And sweatproof is critical for me to not get sunscreen in my eyes. Some brands provide much better sun protection than others. Some are easier to apply than others. Some are almost impossible to wash off at the end of the day. And some are very greasy feeling or rub off easily if you rub up against something. The best way on any of these is to read the reviews from people that are looking at them. Since 2013, the number of reef safe sunscreens has just multiplied tremendously but you still need to watch that they really don't contain the things that they shouldn't. Reef-friendly sunscreens are much more expensive than what you've probably been using, especially if you're like me and you always bought bottles of Noad. I'm willing to pay the difference, but yes, it's an additional reason that I wear a dive skin. I don't have to use nearly as much sunscreen when I snorkel. It does save some money. Dave and I are now using several different brands. Rubber Ducky is one. Think Sport is another one. Both of those come in SPF 50 ranges, and they seem to be working really well. I am trusting that everything that I can find on them makes it that they are reef-friendly. For snorkeling, I use the sunscreen on the back of my neck and my ears only. I prefer not to use it on my face since my mask seals a lot better against bare skin. However, I will use the sunscreen on my face, arms, legs, when we're outside in sunny days. How long a tube will last you depends totally on how often you use it and how much of your body you use sunscreen on versus covering up. Dave and I both tend to wear shirts and hats as our primary sun protection, simply not to have as much goop on our bodies. Hope that helps you, and I certainly hope that you will use reef-friendly sunscreen and dive suits as your major sun protection and not things that will harm the coral. Thanks for listening to the Boat Galley Podcast. If you enjoy it, please spread the word. And we always love those five-star reviews on your favorite podcast player. Thanks so much.